well, welcome to the Monday, March 19th special meeting of the school committee. I'll ask everybody to stand and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, for liberty and justice for all. Okay. So, and just for the record, we have Mr. Graziano participating the uh, remote participation so if but we do have a physical forum so if we do need to take any votes we can do it by roll call um, so I guess without further ado we should just get right into our FY19 budget discussion um, as soon as Dr. McLeod's ready. sorry that's okay okay now that we have pens <laughs> red, red pens red pens <laughs> we're gonna get right into our um, our budget discussion. So why don't I turn it over to you? Thank you. Um, John, I'm sorry, but I'm going to have to share the screen with some of my notes here. Um, so just as a follow up, and we'll bring you right back on, as a follow up to your meeting of last Thursday night where we talked about um, the work that was that we were doing on an ongoing basis and what we had been charged to do at our last meet, joint meeting. Um, it was for basically I was asked to have a follow-up meeting with Mr. Kamalo um, along with, uh, with along with Sue and Carol um, but basically they left the work to the superintendent and the town manager to come up with a solution to the gap in the budget and the directive was um, to work towards an overall 5% tax impact and a budget distribution that mirrors the FY18 budget there was discussion at that meeting about the way in which we all work together um, in, in terms of any decisions that would be made to any reduction to the budget would involve the decision uh, of the school committee and the school committee having a very clear understanding of what those potential reductions might be. And so we're here tonight in this special meeting to talk in detail about some of the work that we've been able to do since that meeting that happened with Mr. Kamalo. Um, at that meeting, uh, we were t uh, given basically an overall budget number to work towards of, of an additional additional reduction of seven hundred and fifteen fifteen thousand dollars. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm just going to say period. And so what we wanted to just kind of begin with tonight before we get to the specifics is just a, a general reminder that we've done over and over again um, that the budget that was voted by the school committee was a budget that was at 7.3 percent and that budget um, here he is again that budget was further reduced by um, by going back in and renegotiating the bus contract which Ms. Robin Mick was able to do uh, that further reduced the budget by another $180,000 um, and got the budget which has still to be voted down to 6.9%. So we wanted to speak and um, just a general and quick reminder about where we were when we recommended a 7.3% budget because that was having already made some significant personnel reductions. And I think it's important to say that and for folks to understand that as we remember, as we recall, the reason that the budget was as high as it was this year was because of some unexpected um, special education costs that were fully driving the budget at 2% at two of our budget was fully special education costs. Um, and again, Sue has done an incredible amount of work at the request of the school committee and the board of selectmen to look at projections over the next three years, an incredible amount of work to make recommendations about reducing capital. Um, and we're here tonight to talk about what could be some additional reductions to an already very tight budget um, that has been developed to meet the varied needs of our students and to maintain our programs and the level of services that we are very proud to be able to provide to our students in the district. Um, so before we go into tonight's specifics, let's just um, have Sue just do a quick reminder of the personnel reductions 
that had already happened prior to the school committee voting the 7.3% increase. So as you can see, um, each, each uh, cost center, if you will, looked at all of their personnel and in terms of addressing the enrollment projections, um, looked at what the needs would be in terms of their personnel. So you can see that Center School had a reduction of 5.0 FTEs, Elmwood 1.0, Hopkins 2.5, Middle School 3.0, High School 1.6, Special Education 1.8, and Technology 1.0. So before we even began, we had already reduced our personnel by 15.9 FTEs. And I will just remind the school committee because I know there was a very impassioned presentation at one of your meetings um, from the art department um, that this did include programmatic changes. For example, reducing a, an, an art teacher that was providing ceramics at the high school. That program is no longer going to be offered. Um, this includes reducing an entire team at the middle school. Um, and thereby increasing class size in that area. Um, it includes reducing six paraprofessionals, um, which was intentionally done in order to support smaller class size in kindergarten and first grade, where we know um, having smaller class size has an incredible impact on future, on learning in general. Um, I don't recall the details so much at the Hopkins School. I think that there were some reductions made there in order to um, prioritize other, other areas of, of, of need right. and bring on some of the increases. Right. So it bears repeating only because we've already done a significant amount of work and you've done a significant amount of work to bring a, a budget that we, we believe was necessary in order to maintain the level of services uh, within an ever-increasing enrollment, within changing needs within our, within our district that we've all talked about, that come as a result of growth. And we also know that with that growth, there's going to be a cost. So today's deliberate, tonight's deliberation is really asking us to look at where can we continue to make reductions that can be as far away from the classroom as possible um, while still maintaining the level of, of program and services that, that we are proud to be able to provide within the district. So we'll begin and go through each of them. Please, um, members of the school committee, uh, stop me at any time, Sue and I, as we go through this. I'm hopeful that through your questions um, and in addition, additional suggestions that you may have, um, that we'll be prepared to come tomorrow night and that we'll be prepared to come tomorrow evening <laughs> um, ready for potentially making a vote, um, which is what we have been asked to do. So as you can see at the top of, the, of this um, spreadsheet that, that Sue has created, um, the, in, the, the increase that was voted by the school committee was a 7.3% increase, and we've already talked about that. Reducing the bus contract brought us down to 6.9%. So working from a 6.9% decrease, one of the decreases, additional staff reduction that we are um, I guess the word would be recommending, or at least discussing tonight, would be an additional full-time reduction to the tech integration positions. We currently have three. We had, as you saw on the previous slide, we've already reduced tech integration by one FTE. This would be an additional FTE. I want to stress that any of these recommendations are being made for one year only. And part of what we hope to do in some of the cases is evaluate the needs of the department, um, given that we had to make reductions somewhere. This is an area where there has been a great amount of change over the past five years. And we can feel good about the fact that a blended learning environments are something that our teachers are largely comfortable with. 
And therefore, the, the role of the tech integration person has changed. It used to be, um, at the elementary level anyway, a, a co-taught classroom experience between the tech integration teacher and the classroom teacher, where together they would support the students in using devices in the classroom, accessing technology, and helping the teacher to feel comfortable using um, a blended environment. At, given the, how great they've done their job, um, that role is, has changed somewhat, um, so that we're, we're really looking at a tech integration. They have many, many responsibilities beyond the classroom. Um, just That includes just simply supporting all the technology. But the tech integration at the elementary level is more um, a, a support that the teachers can request. And so this is a position that, unfortunately, um, when we think again about the constraints on the budget and the impact on the day-to-day -day functioning of the classroom, this would be one that we would have to look to reduce and evaluate the impact of that reduction as we work towards next year's budget and bringing back that, that um, department, that, that individual with an individual within that department. I also want to say that one of the things that we looked at really carefully when we were making any of these recommendations was the impact that it would have on individual teachers. I'm very much aware of the fact that we, as much as possible, wanted to keep our teaching staff full. And um, in, the, in thinking about an elementary tech integration position, if there were to be a reduction, um, an individual in that role would be able to um, be hired into a teaching, a classroom teaching position. Um, and we know that we have increases at the elementary level um, for, t for classroom teachers at the Elmwood School and at the Marathon School. So Dr. McLeod, uh, this particular position, is it at Elmwood? Um, so for tonight's discussion um, purposes, we really wanted to stay more global if we can um, out of respect to individuals because these have not been finalized or voted um, there hasn't always been the opportunity to have a direct conversation with any individual that may be affected um, however no matter where the position would come from the budget impact would be the same the reason the budget impact is put in the way it is would be because the, re the replacement, as I explained, in terms of uh, the individual being able to uh, apply for a teaching, not apply, be placed in a classroom position, this is the amount that's budgeted for a new hire. I, I guess where my question is mm -hmm. coming from is that if we remove a tech integration specialist and now the teachers, when they need help, where would they go? Is there um, is there coverage there? And where the classroom sizes, especially at the elementary level, you, you have class sizes of 20 plus, <coughs> and the teachers, they already have a lot of burden. If they needed help, are they able to get the support yeah. that they need? So great, great question, Nina. First of all, there would be one tech integration specialist remaining at the secondary level and one at the elementary level, district-wide. Secondly, um, you point out that this is a difficult, all of these reductions are difficult and are going to have a negative impact. None of what we are being asked to do um, are things that we would want to have to do. And it is going to make it more challenging for the classroom teacher to be able to, you know, when you're, you're now reducing two tech integration positions, it's going to have a, an impact on the classroom. What would be some of the measures that would be taken to help the teachers? Would there be some kind of a training or anything that would help alleviate that problem? So what we've been able to do, um, so the, the, sorry, not answering your question directly. The whole role of tech integration specialist was to avoid the teacher having to be trained up into that area of specialty, yeah. right? Because they already have so many other responsibilities. But we've also looked carefully at the level of request of tech integration and the level of um, comfort that teachers have in meeting those needs within their classroom. Um, and that is why we feel that this is a position 
um, compared to others that we might have looked at that would have less of an impact on the day-to-day -day, um, instruction. When you started, you said we have three now. When you started speaking tonight, we have three tech integration mm -hmm. specialists. We cut we one had of those four. positions. Oh, so we had four. Yeah, right. this okay. reduced okay. one. Okay, I like see. The beginning of this this year. would all be right. another. And this would bring us to two. Which would leave us with two district wide. Okay. For all the buildings. Mm -hmm. Okay. I want to say, and, I, and again, I think this is in contrast with the discussion that we're having, which is the level of services that Hopkins. Hawkinton provides. This is uh, a, you know, our district is known for its technology, it's known for its blended learning, we are leaders in the area, and, you know, five years ago, um, coming here from another district, we didn't have any such thing as a tech integration person. To come to a district that had five just goes to show the level of services, the expertise, and the reason that we're leaders in our in our as a district we are leaders right mm -hmm. top performing and so when we talk about reductions and we talk about the importance of thinking about this as a one-year reduction you know i i can't stress enough that we cannot maintain this level while we are growing in town without it costing money it's going to just cost more to be able to continue to do as well as we do so Dr. McLeod, you know, as you're going through some of these yeah. and you're talking through some of the challenges, I'm just wondering if we can talk to, is there something that we can do and request of the community to assist in some way, for instance, the tech integration, um, you know, there's a growing number of technologists in the community. Is it possible to rely on, you know, some kind of a volunteer opportunities mm -hmm. there and ask that if we want to maintain that level of service, we require help? Mm -hmm. Um, so just throwing it out there mm -hmm. to think about. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And this would be a question certainly for Mr. Ghosh. Um, there may be specific parts of the roles and responsibility of these individuals that could be picked up by, by volunteers. Um, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't be able to answer that question, but it's a good one to think about. Sure. Yeah. And I know there's a lot of people with, with technology expertise in the community. I'm sure that there are, but they don't probably most if any have the additional educational expertise as well so it's not like you know this isn't low-hanging fruit and it's not a skill set that's easily replaced either it's something that really adds value and i think i know we're going to go through all of these one by one as we should but skipping ahead to the end usually we vote on the superintendent's recommended budget and i don't feel like that's what we're going to do you're not working on. You already have. Right. You already have. <laughs> our next vote, our, our next vote is going to be missing a word. It definitely is. Uh, and I, so I think we're going to have a similar reaction and conversation to all Everything. of these. I mean, I know, you know, I know that the people who are already in the district are just going to stretch themselves thinner and work That's harder exactly and try to right. fill these gaps. And maybe that will work okay for a year, but. This is not a position that any of us want to be in. No. But it's everything, everything is on some sort of, not everything, but a lot of instruction requires some kind of device, the Chromebooks or whatever it is. Yeah. And when those don't work the way they're supposed to work, things potentially, this, the teachers always have backup, but the intended lesson mm -hmm. comes to a screeching halt. Right. They have other uh, things set up, backups planned, but you can't move ahead with the mm -hmm. original plan when you can't get access to your technology so yeah and at the elementary level you know and I say this all the time because it is not MCAS that drives our work it is MCAS performance is the result of our work however our students are going to be challenged to need to be able to take the third grade MCAS on their devices they're going to need to be able to type we worry that if students are not really comfortable on their devices that they're going to be finish quickly Right? I, 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 I just, I don't, right? Or take so long to enter their thoughts. For some students, monitoring their thoughts while writing really impacts on the vocabulary that they use, at the sentence length, the sentence structure, all of those things. And it's really, really important that we are able to have our kids well prepared for that. And our tech integration specialists really help along those lines. 
Um, along with that reduction would come the reduction of the SML stipend, if this is uh, a direction that we're going in, because uh, that department would now be reduced to two. And this was a new SML position, subject matter leader position. It could be compared with, for example, we have a subject matter leader in all of the other content areas, science, math, ELA, music, art, etc. Um, it, this was a new subject matter leader that was added in last year. Um, it was considered a very unique position because it's a very unique department. Um, but with these reductions, it's just, it doesn't really make sense any longer to have a subject matter leader. Rather, there'd be one person at the secondary level who would be um, providing the supports and one person at the elementary level. John? Yeah. Sue just said it may not. Yeah, I mean, just it, it, again, we're talking about small money, but but I do wonder if if somehow we ended up keeping that tech integration specialist, it still doesn't feel like an SML for three people is a defendable kind of budget item. So, okay. Thank you. So the next the next reduction is a really difficult one to talk about um, because. What this one really talks about, and it's, I'll say it out loud for those of you who cannot see the slide, is looking to reduce instrumental music at the fifth grade level. Um, what this really speaks to is where we are as a community in terms of being able to offer the numbers of things that we've been able to enjoy and offer within this community at no cost to, to the parents, I guess. Um, we have a fabulous, fabulous music program, as you all know. We're incredibly proud of our musicians. We it's so enjoy the concerts. It's something that brings such joy to, and pride to all of us. Um, and it's really, really difficult to make this recommendation um, just on a personal level as a musician myself. However, um, we do have a full instrumental program beginning in sixth grade. Kids are, have access to band, orchestra, chorus. We have a full general music program that begins in kindergarten and goes right through to eighth grade. Um, and we have other areas, um, you know, where we can think about sports, for example. Um, that kids don't have access to teams until they get to high school. Um, so in the case of instrumental music, students, for those of you who may not be familiar or who may not have students in the instrumental program, um, can begin taking instrumental music lessons in fifth grade. It used to be fourth grade. That's a reduction that we have already made in the district. Um, Students rent their instruments, so this is already parents pay for the cost of the instrument. The cost of the instrumental music program really comes down to the instruction. And the instruction happens during the, the school day, um, and students are removed, I, I don't like to say pulled from, um, participate in whatever the instrumental music, whatever their instrument might be, at identified periods throughout the day. So they may be coming from a multitude of places, I guess I can't close that, um, to have their instrumental music. So it's pretty unique to the fifth grade. We wouldn't do it like that at any other grade level. Um, and what this would mean, it would be the reduction of, um, this would be partially made up for by the fact that we would not be hiring, we would not need to increase to um, allow for the increase in K1 and 2. So there are three additional sections that we would be looking to increase, which would mean that we would have had to increase our music staff. So this is a partially um, made up or compensated for by not increasing and reassigning teaching responsibilities. 
but it will include a reduction of approximately 0 0.3, uh, 0.5 overall, a 0.5 mm -hmm. overall reduction to the current music staffing. Um, how many, do we know how many students participate in that? I don't have that number in front of me, mm -hmm. um, but I, I can tell you this, Jean. I know that if you look at the fifth grade participation in band, chorus, and orchestra, in the choices of those three, it's 80% of, of the fifth grade population. And that's the other thing to think about is that when we look at that many students and the increases that we've made to the budget over time to meet the needs of those increasing numbers of students, where we might have been providing lessons for 100 students, right. you know, now we're providing lessons for 160, mm -hmm. and that number keeps growing. Um, and so I don't know the exact number, but I can tell you that overall, it's a very popular program. It definitely means that we would be, we are now at a place in our budget deliberations where it's affecting program. And um, he's there, he's just hiding. Can you still hear us, John? So, I don't know if I answered you, did I? Yeah, no, that's, I'm just, expand, I'm just thinking ahead to, okay. you know, when we first needed to, um, first time we had athletic fees, Yeah, we were considering cutting freshman sports and had parents, you know, <laughs> had parents standing in the meetings waving their checkbooks saying, charge me a fee, charge me yeah. a fee, and I just was, that seems like, a pretty steep fee. I can't do that math that fast in my head. Well, we do. We do. Um, you know, students certainly would have this, the opportunity. Parents would have the opportunity to arrange for instrumental music lessons, and they do that through the um, boosters. I don't know what the they're called. Association. Music association. Yeah, okay. um, and you know whether or not there was availability, but I know that even students who participate in music at the higher levels often take private lessons with our with our teachers outside of school. Um, there could certainly be after-school opportunities that, that could um, be arranged um, for group lessons. Dr. McLeod, mm -hmm. how long have you had this program? Oh, it predates me. Jean, I don't know how long. It's predates been here probably me. forever. <laughs> That's old. So by taking this out, are we um, getting rid of that offering altogether? It would be gone for next year, Mina. I, I think, as with everything else, it's something that we should be, as hard as it is, to begin somewhere evaluating the impact that this is having on the program. Um, you know, there is also an opportunity that the fifth grade students currently have for a, a band orchestra or chorus, an opportunity to get together as a group. Um, for those of us have gone, who have gone to the concerts that take place in the Athletic Center, um, you know, it's, it's very, very popular and a lot of, of students have the opportunity to perform. Um, now, all of our fifth grade students also get general music. I need to stress that. It's not that they wouldn't have any music because they would still get that as part of their specials rotation. But currently, they also have the opportunity to, once a week, have a large group chorus uh, band or orchestra where they all come together as a group. And that's currently something that's also built into the Hopkins schedule. I see. Why don't I continue? Yes. We can certainly come back. Is that okay? Um, the. I, I, I can talk about the non-teaching support personnel um, in, in a group. We have, again, we try to look at, Jean, to your point about everybody having picking up more to do um, within areas that are already stretched. We have a middle school non-teaching support personnel. These are intentionally vague. Um, partly to provide the opportunity to work with the individuals, but also partly to provide the opportunity for the administration within that building to make adjustments and decisions. Um, but it is a non-teaching support position, and it's a point four position at the middle school. Similarly, we have a non-teaching admin assist 
assistant at the central office um, that we, you know, we, we couldn't look at every other department without looking at our own. Mm -hmm. And an area that we really needed to and continue to look at is where are there places where we can make additional reductions at central office. Um, again, it means other people picking up different responsibilities, but that's something that we're willing to do um, for next year to s in order to get to this place that we're trying to get to. Um, there's also a non-teaching support personnel position at the high school that you can see also listed at line 17. Mm -hmm. So I thought I would just group those together. The CTL stipends, um, we wanted to look, when we looked at central office, we also wanted to look at the curriculum area. And in that area, Dr. Kavanaugh felt that um, as long as we could maintain some of the CTL positions, so curriculum teacher leaders at the elementary level, we have one in English, one in math, and one in science at each building. And for next year, um, we would be able to recommend reducing only the science CTLs and again for next year only. Um, there's a lot of work that's happening in science as we bring on a new curriculum that includes all of the teachers yeah. and um, next year is a year that um, although it would be wonderful to have the teacher leadership, Dr. Kavanaugh will have to um, assign more of that responsibility I suppose to the new assistant superintendent. I'm not sure how she, I'm not presuming to speak for her, but those responsibilities would have to be reassigned. As much as we love having teacher leadership. Um, and then what have I not covered? Oh, the long-term leader. Yeah. <clears throat> so there, in looking at everything and in having conversations with our wonderful administrative team, um, Mr. Keller brought to my attention that um, there is a long-term leave that has been requested from the middle school for next year um, without pay. And the teacher would definitely be coming back the following year and their position would be secure. Um, but for next year and next year only, um, Mr. Keller would be able to redistribute responsibilities again, um, affecting the teachers that are currently uh, there so as not to bring on a full-time or long-term sub, which would be a very big savings to the budget without reducing anybody while still meeting the needs of the students. Again, a one-year only um, reduction, and that's what that long-term leave is showing you. Mm -hmm. And then finally, because we did, as Sue reminded us, reduce our um, middle school team, Mr. Keller reminded me that there was a middle school team leader stipend um, that would no longer be needed because that team had previously been reduced. Um, and so that was another $4,000. The total brings us to um, $333,000 or an overall reduction. <laughs> there we go. Um, an overall <coughs> budget increase of 6.1% down from the original voted superintendent's recommended budget of 7.3. Mm -hmm. And a reduction $200,000 short of what was, you know, I won't say requested, but a number that was discussed um, from the town manager. And at this point, I, we have exhausted any creative ideas that we have um, and even with that you can see that the recommendations in front of you have been painful. Mm -hmm. Further questions or ideas or places that we haven't looked that we might look? Um, we're um, I do have a question. This won't save us any money but personnel has two N's and one L. So <laughs> At one point, we talked about, um, so when we were going through our capital, we, it was the HVAC, right? <coughs> the neighbors, that we said we would take that off the table, 
and pay for it out of our operating budget. Mm -hmm. But then we have since said we're going to keep that as pay as you go or, or bonding. Well, so um, it's not clear where we will land with the capital. Um, so that was one of the part of the discussion of this $715,000 number was whether or not that was still necessary to take that and put it into the um, operating. And basically, in order for the town manager to get to that 5% tax impact that the Board of Selectmen has charged him with, it was going to be a combination of things, so it was not clear where we fell in terms of capital. Okay. So I'm not sure. So I'm not, the only reason I ask is because if the if we can restore that to the capital request list, would that mean that we could find something in our operating in terms of postponing whatever capital we were going to, but whatever you know, of the H not the HVAC, the HVAC has to get, get done, but whatever of the other maintenance um, stuff that we were going to do, if we if we were forced to, would we be able to find some wiggle room there? Well, so th that was part of my original discussion with the town manager, um, or, you know, part of this rationale was that if we were to just simply cut that out of our operating budget, it would leave you with about $30,000 total mm -hmm. for preventive maintenance district-wide. Mm -hmm. And as we say, all of these cuts were trying to make them a one-year cut. The, the reality of that may become very difficult, but right out of the gate next year, that would mean we would need that additional 108000 back into the operating. Right. So when you're looking at those long-term projections in terms of... Um, kind of trying to smooth out the requests, that would not be my recommendation. The other thing that I'm that that what you just said is making me think of is I don't know what conversation John's going to know more about how this works than I do. But there's a capital stabilization fund. If if we you know if we had to go way low in our maintenance in order to balance this budget and we experienced some unanticipated maintenance during the year, would we have the ability to go to the capital stabilization fund or the appropriations um, reserve fund? So my understanding, the appropriations reserve fund is for the uh, town side of the budget. So it, it's for, you know, any emergency costs that may I'm sorry, John. Because he's he was on appropriation. Can you go ahead? But we 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 used that that appropriation statement to fund the tool. Yeah. Oh, okay. And I also, I, I think, I we we may have, but it certainly isn't the most common use. I'm just, you know, extraordinary capital times. <laughs> capital stabilization requires town meeting approval. Okay. So Okay. All right. Yeah. So, so it yes. Yeah. So, so the appropriations would be the only. The yep. appropriations would be the only, and when we discussed that briefly this year around all of our changes in special education, um, it was not advised as being available for the school department. Well, so I think I don't know if the appropriations committee is the one that didn't advise that, but. They haven't had a meeting in a long time, so I, I don't know. I still think that that is a door worth knocking on, but at any rate, I'm just raising a suggestion that, you know, if getting to this number is somehow not acceptable, if that's an opportunity, that if we're willing to roll the dice on maintenance with the understanding that if things come up during the year that we didn't foresee, that we were not able to budget for, that we're going to have the ability to go to appropriation. They, I mean, I'm sure we could get the history on it, but they don't frequently spend most, if not all, of that. Um, you know, if we're if we're at that point, I would rather do that than 
anything else. Additional personnel. It, I think it's definitely worth throwing on the table if we are at that point tomorrow night. Yeah. Um, but again, it is with that caution that that leaves $30,000 for extraordinary maintenance yeah, and district wide. I don't think any of these things are recommended budgeting None practices. Of them are. So, yes. you know, I'm just trying to yep. see what other bad ideas we can come up with that will, you know, I, I mean, I think at least based on our, the work that you did for our projections, we are satisfied that this is a very difficult one year problem. And so, you know, if we have to do some things that aren't smart things to do every year, you know, okay, for one year, I, I mean, I won't be here next year um, to experience the consequence of it, but I just, anyway, I just, I'm anticipating some pushback on the number that we've gotten to, and I'm trying to be ready with what, what could possibly be the next step. Mm -hmm. So I feel like I'm doing all the talking and other people should have opportunity to ask questions, but since I'm talking, I'm going to keep going. It looks to me like, based on this, we've reduced another 5.2 FTEs. Yes. So that means that we have reduced 21.1 FTEs from, you know, where you started with your admin team in the fall. In a district where, um, and, and as how Nancy, many students have we added? Well, right? as she pointed out today in a conversation, you know, there, there's already, we're already 100 students beyond projections in March of this year, and we haven't even gotten to, for next year's projections. Mm -hmm. So that's a really good way of summarizing it, Jean, because it, it's actually bizarre. Yeah, we and I, I mean, and I, I know, we've also added staff. It's not only, we're not only taking away, but you know, there's a lot of shifting, there's a lot of reorganizing. Um, you know, there, there just are a lot of reductions and I don't know, I hope that tomorrow we'll have the opportunity to understand what the town has been, has, has had to do um, to get to the number that the Board of Selectmen wants. But I just, you know, I don't want to only talk about what we've done since the last meeting. I think, you know, yeah. the budget driver summary that you gave us yeah. is important, but it's important to marry these two it is. documents together. And in addition, I really, it sounds like you don't really have clarity about where we stand with our capital, mm -hmm. but we really need to understand that. Mm -hmm. You know, we need an answer from the town manager about, we didn't vote on any of that capital. We said that's what we were willing to do, and that's when we thought, when we had, we were under the impression that it counted. Mm -hmm. If it's not going to count, then I take the position that we should get it back. Right. If we're not getting it back, it counts for something. Yeah. And this isn't the number that he was looking for, but we gave back well more than two hundred thousand mm -hmm. dollars in pay as you go. Mm -hmm. um, so there's got to be some kind of a compromise, but we can't even take any action tonight because we don't have a response about the capital. Right. You know, we can't decide one thing without understanding the other, so I'm getting agitated the more I'm talking, but you know, it's it's really frustrating. We're, we voted our budget two months ago, and there... Well, you know, Jean, if I can just respond to, you know, what the theme that I'm hearing from the school committee tonight is, is this incredible recognition that any of these reductions, therefore, have an impact on other personnel. Mm -hmm. they, they have to, right? Um, and an example that is really uh, something that's very easy for people to, to really understand is there has been ongoing discussion since the beginning of our budget process about what looks like an, uh, an addition to the Elmwood School budget uh, with the adjustment counselor that could be an easy reduction. You know, well, oh, you're just adding that this year, you've always done without it, why can't you just reduce that? The impact that the building principal or assistant principal could have in, in supporting a student in distress could impact their entire day. And when you think about a day full of meetings and a day full of emails and a day for, full of conversations that have not happened because one of those two administrators has been supporting a child in distress means that they start the, their day job at 3 o'clock in the afternoon and are there until 7 o'clock. 
that is not a healthy thing for our administrators. It's not, you know, we need to think about people's health and well, well-being, but also the expertise of the principal is not to support a student who's having an emotionally distressful day, which is why we need to have and have needed to have an adjustment counselor. Similarly, reductions that seem like they might be easy ones to do were already considered and maintained while other reductions were made. And we have to understand that too, that when we look at where we are at this point in the budget, people might be able to cherry pick, but it's so important to understand that the reason it remained in the budget to begin with was that other things were given up. Mm -hmm. um, and that's why this is also really frustrating, is because we know that, the, that this is going to add additional, additional stress to people who are already working at 120%. Um, I'm curious to know, because we've been racking our brains about this for three weeks now, if there are things that any of you believe we have not explored that we might. I mean, I would think that's sorry, John saying something. John? Okay. I don't think, um, so this isn't something we haven't explored, but um, I want to make sure we, we at least really push hard on this. So you've given us the um, the for the FD reduction numbers in this proposal, you've given us the salary number, and as the town manager is fond of pointing out, the town carry the benefits costs for our employees. And I, I did some quick and dirty math on the positions that would be benefit eligible, you know, yeah. but I don't know about that point eight FD that's like actually a like bits of people that would really make and it. Point five and it's a point six and a point two, so part of it would be. The point the point six would be. Yeah. Um and I and I took I don't know what they use for a fully loaded number at town hall. Um I used you know thirty five percent for fringe benefits. I think it's a pretty conservative number on the corporate side. So that's what I used. And it amounts to about a hundred thousand dollars. So I, I think we've got additional savings there that I think we need to be, be potentially in contact with the town manager to find out how he calculates that and make sure that that is credited to the recommendation because um, the, the salary is not representative of what these employees actually cost. Mm. I think that's a great point and yeah. I also, uh, in that spirit, we also, as part of our... Um, the capital plan and the work that we're doing over the summer, we will move the buses into Hopkinton and that will add $50,000 to revenue for the town. And so I think that that ought to get reflected. I mean, I know yes. that just, just now with those two things, we've narrowed the gap without even talking about the capital to $50,000 from what was asked. I know it's not all in the operating budget, but yes. you know, Yep, we should add those. It's to in the big picture. Charge. It should be. It should come. It, it, it's certainly all goes to the overall net tax impact. And I, you know, this is where all none of the elected people are municipal finance experts, right? And yep. so, you know, we really need to to rely on on Susan and on Norman to explain the math mm -hmm. instead of trying to do it on the fly at that meeting. Um, but it just, you know. These are great things for us to bring up with him tomorrow. Mm -hmm. yep. Should they be put in this in, as a number, line item? Because as you said, they aren't municipal finance experts, so if it's in there as a line item and it looks like an additional... We just, we just saved, like as a negative, I guess. We just saved... Um, uh, never mind, it would be positive because all of those are reductions. I mean, we could, positive. after we've done the 6.1%, we could add, ca yeah, capital reductions. Mm -hmm. um, for discussion purposes. So, Dr. McLeod, I am having a hard time with the 0.8 uh, reduction. I mean, overall with everything, yep. but the 0.8, the instrumental music where the program has been around and where the number of children are increasing all the time. Yeah. Um, you know, so these programs offer something that is so important. Yeah. Um, so, I'm having a very hard time with that. 
Yeah. I, I see you have gone through a lot of areas. So two things which are sticking out in my mind, and I'm certain you may have looked at, uh, you know, you would have looked at it. Um, so in terms of training for teachers and, you know, the professional development, I do think it's extremely important to stay on top and, you know, learn what's new. Um, I recall there was a request uh, about $50,000 uh, which was a bit contentious uh, where CPAC parents were having some concerns there. I'm wondering if you had a chance to look at something in, in that area, mm -hmm. if there are any possibilities, because not that that would not impact children, it would, yeah. right? If the teachers are not trained in the latest, right. it would have an impact on the quality of education and teachers need to refresh and move away yeah. and understand what's going on broader picture. So I'm just wondering if you all had a chance to look at that area. We talked about that today, there you go. Okay. Um, and we talked about um, we meaning um, Dr. Kavanaugh and I, and Sue and I, and, and Jean and I. Um, the increase that was recommended had to do with meeting the needs of students um, who just learn differently, right? And we know that the impact. Um, of not having access internally means that they have to, we have to hire outside. For example, we would have to go to accept. Mm -hmm. So to get an Orton Gillingham trained person, for example, if we don't have them internally at the cost of, like if we think 50,000 to train all of the people that we are wanting to do and have internal expertise, we would have to contract outside with outside consultancies to come into our district at a much greater rate. Um, and I know that we talked about the professional development in order to be able to do this, meeting the needs not only of students who are in our intensive special education program, but in our general education program because we're a big fan within this district of train the trainer. So that if teachers have an expertise and they're able to, you know, to share that expertise with other teachers, um, just even providing instructional intervention strategies. So I would not want to see us go, because we really were identifying a gap. And when we've identified a gap that will improve our instruction, to remove that in favor of something that to me is something we've been able to provide that's additional and not required, that's where I have a hard time. You know, I feel like that is a requirement of the instructional program we are, we were not meeting student needs. I will say, however, and this is where we don't know, um, we always want to look at grant funding. I mean, we always want to see, we, we had not been a Title I grant funded district last year. We are now going to be able to be, have access to Title I funds again. Would that be an area where Dr. Kavanaugh could find funding, you know, for this through Title I funds? I don't know the answer because I know that she's already been earmarking other areas. Um, for Title I, and I don't know if you're familiar with what they are already, if that money's already been spent. I, I think a portion of it already yeah. has yeah. been, um, um, even just with some of the changes that we've done with yeah. other other cuts, mm -hmm. the, the thought was to move that into Title I. We also had already previously cut the professional development budget district-wide early on in the budget at central office, and I can't remember by how much. But we looked at that as something that early on when we saw how high we were, we were going to have to reduce and count on grant funding to provide professional development. Um, so I, I would really not want to make that recommendation. Um, the other thing that comes to my mind looking through all this, again, don't want to have cuts if possible, uh, but uh, was uh, the athletics department something that was looked at? Uh, mm -hmm. What were the thoughts around that? Um, are you thinking about anything specific in the athletic department? No, I'm just wondering, just looking at, um, you know, if we go back up, yeah. we are looking at many, many areas. Yeah. And I'm just wondering if but you not have... so much in athletics. Well, two things that were brought uh, to mind and, and have been um, listed by appropriations um, were uh, reducing perhaps some of the athletic materials. Um, one of the things that came up was yoga mats. Um, and another area was not increasing the event staff. Mm -hmm. And I think this is where it's really important to go back to the public and remind them that the things that remained in the budget that were prioritized 
were in the budget because other things were reduced. Mm -hmm. So we, wherever uh, a department head was not level funded, we brought them back in and had very difficult. They had to make very difficult choices about what was going to be in this year and what was going to be out this year because we wanted them to come in with a level funded budget. And so things that remain there were things that that individual, when you call it, when you when you um, speak about athletics, had prioritized. The event staff discussion came because of the difficulty that our athletic director has in staffing events because they are so underpaid. And she had brought the spreadsheet and the comparison with other districts. And even with that, we did not come in on par. I still think we came right, in. Right, yeah, so we, we still came. We didn't do the whole We did way. not fund at the original request. Mm -hmm. um, we also, as you'll remember, recently have approved additions. For example, um, football at the middle school level. That was a pilot, though. So that was as a pilot, for no cost. Right. Um, that's right. Same Both of the additions track. that she brought were at no, no cost. cost. Right. Um, the only one we're adding, because I think they completed their two-year pilot, is the alpine ski. Alpine ski was but, added. So that is a new cost. But I feel strongly that that's our policy. They yeah. have paid for that out of their pocket they for two years correct. as required. Yeah. And so to now say sorry, yeah. I. I for the amount of money that it is, I think that that's not good. And don't forget, we already dramatically in, in, increased our athletic fee. Right. $90 a sport. We did do that. A season. And, and I think to go to our enrollment discussion, we had to double the coaches at the middle school track um, because of the numbers of participants. Right. And, uh, and that's a really good problem to have because um, if you've been on the school committee Two years ago, we had very lengthy conversations about student activity and additional recess and mm -hmm. just making sure that there was sufficient time for kids to um, have movement within their days. Um, and that's why it's such a good discussion, but you know, we have held on so tightly to our three times a week PE slash health program in this district. Um, where other districts are really struggling to be able to provide that social, emo social emotional learning support to students. We have such a strong PE and health program in this district that, you know, we believe strongly um, provides that balance that allows students to perform at the level that they perform. And we know that well-balanced kids do better academically. And Dr. McLeod, I don't want you to misunderstand I, what I'm saying, that no, you cut something. No. I'm just looking at all this it. creativity that you have shown in every yeah. area and just throwing it out there that tomorrow when we get into the discussion and we're asked for further cuts, yeah. well, which are, the, you know, what are the options that I we have I appreciate it. I do. I, I think anything that we can put on the dis table and discuss tonight right. um, is really helpful. But I do want to clarify, we're not going this far in the weeds tomorrow. I mean, okay. at the end of the day, we vote a number. How that number gets allocated is entirely and only in the purview of the school committee. We don't need to go through in this granular detail with the Board of Selectmen mm -hmm. what we're going to cut. But yeah. This is for our benefit so we understand the impact of the decision that we have to make. Sure. But, you know, I don't expect that we're going to go down, we're going to spend everybody's time going through this level of detail. No, I think to reinforce what you said earlier, what we want to be able to understand before this is put to a vote is where does the town stand? Because we were ch we were tasked with maintaining um, the same division or the same percentage of the budget. Mm -hmm. um, I would think before we can feel comfortable voting any kind of reduction, we have to understand where the town stands. Mm -hmm. um, the only thing I'll say is, is there a way to capture John's suggestion about the offset to the health health insurance? I on the town that. I made a note. Sure. Capital reductions, excise tax increase. Um, I mean, I just think it's a question at this point. I sure. Think, you know, I think his um, his ballpark number is good, but I have no idea what. So I have one other request: is if somehow you know we know how much. Uh, 
how much the number of students has increased. If there is any way to show that I here. Can take this line. Sorry, I'm just going to move this line to there because well, this line. Thousand dollars a year per kid. What is that one? Is reflected right in this. Fourteen thousand. Fourteen thousand. Yeah, this is wrong. You know. Is it again? Well, the kids. Reduction of operations. Fourteen thousand a kid. Fourteen. Is this? Yeah. Right. Do you want that line to be right there? There you go. And then the rest of these things. That's not going to happen. Because they're just discussion items. Well, what I was trying to get to was this. Oh, gotcha. Capturing them all together. It's a beautiful thing. Yeah. So maybe just you know underneath okay. or yeah. around in the area with reduction. Okay. Just as a note to for us to raise that. Can question. you see that, John? Um, maybe you could share that with John. Or yeah. It is. Okay, you can see the working document that Sue's working from, where she reflects. Yes. Okay, so now because we're up to okay. Good. Sorry, Mina. Yeah. So, Dr. McLeod, what I was saying is the number of students, the population increase, right? If there's any way to capture that here, and the number of increase to ELL, or any other big driver impact, I think if we can capture that, that would hit everybody uh, and would be a good, okay, uh, provide a good context. So, uh, enrollment increase currently. Mm -hmm. Times fourteen thousand dollars per student. <laughs> Please. <laughs> and I, I was a couple of years ago just saying. So yeah. I think it's between. Oh, no, it's current. We've got the current. Is it per pupil? pupil? The per pupil. Oh, the two thousand sixteen. I'm just saying, like, definitely isn't correct. Right. Yeah. Enrollment increased by district and L. L and if sped is also a possibility to show. Okay. So maybe even just on this enrollments. This is projected FY19, if we can show current FY18. We're already over this number. We are. Right? Yep. yep. Um, so we can add a column that says current. If, mm -hmm. if we change, if we reduce the budget by this amount, what does that mean? What would be the impact on the projections that you've done for the next couple of years? I'd have to go back and redo them. But they would go down, presumably. Unless we were just going to be adding that back in for the, the following year. So it just really, again, um, so if we're reducing the FY19, but saying that, you know, we, we need these positions back in FY20, it just brings this it one back up. It just makes that higher. Exactly. Exactly. Right. Um, I also, uh, you know, I, I didn't have the benefit of having the document, but one of the selectmen was reading us um, the increases for the last several years, which didn't jive with my memory. None of them are higher than three and a half percent, and I know Dr. McLeod, with all due respect, since you've been here, we've never voted a budget less than 4%. Um, and so just in terms of giving all of them the full context, if we can, you know, add a few columns to the left that show what our our increases have been the last three to five years, it might make, it might illustrate the point better that this year really is an anomaly. You know, 4.7 is still high, but I think we've had that in the last couple of years. We've certainly been at four and a half. John probably remembers that. He's shaking his head. Um, I mean, I think, Jean, that information that we have, maybe even another slide that shows the two columns, one showing increase over the last five years and the other showing percent of the budget. Yes. Um, if you go back nine years, the percentage of the bu budget is significantly less. It's come down a lot. That's, and those are, I mean, so that was... That's a chart that I've kept based on what yeah. was voted at town meeting. Yeah. And I understand that after everything settles out in the wash, this is what's challenging, in my opinion, about trying to drive towards an overall tax impact number because there are so many variables that can't be known. So, for example, whatever debt exclusions pass this year at town meeting that will be completed within FY19, I don't know if they're factored in. Yeah. Or not factored in, but you know, I, I, it seems to me like they always <coughs> vote the final tax 
impact number well into the fiscal year. You would know this better than I do, but I, I find it really confusing how they would even figure out what a 5% number is. Well, Maybe we, not that, but how to for sure get there because there are still some variables that they're just not going to know. I guess they have a model in there. It, it, exactly. But, yeah. Yeah. Um, it just seems it's it's harder for me to conceptualize than a five percent operating increase, which you know is obviously not what we can get to either. But right, it's a hard number to understand. Now, did you want me to add in the hundred and eight the HVAC as one of the potential? Well, is it is it within capital already? Is it already captured in there? Well, it would be captured yeah. in, in the, here, yeah. but if we were to put it up here in the operating, that that's the question. Oh, oh, oh. As a reduction? But that's, you know, so that was the... It's if already we were in to there say the that reduction. It's in there in the capital. Yeah. I, well... It would be called what a flip. Is, what is your preference for how how that like what would be our recommendation our preferred way for that to happen well the difficulty like I said is then next year when we're increasing the operating by that hundred thousand right just for extraordinary maintenance right so we could take it out of line 26 mm -hmm. and add it in to line 19 yeah that makes our operating look better right but it it kicks the can down the road it does I like leaving it in capital reductions because I think it's a whole separate conversation and I think that um, you know it raises the question as to if those reductions are not going to be counted which we fully understood that that's what we had been first asked to do yeah. then where is that gone right and I think adding it the way it is the way that Sue has this illustrated here shows <coughs> the work that we've done Excuse me. right if 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 we did that, what would be our percent increase? Well, keep in mind that only the operational. Oh, you mean if we were to reduce? Like if we put the hundred and eight thousand back in there just for giggles. Mm -hmm. Well, just 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 so I understand what you know. So we would be under six percent. Right. You'd be down to five point eight. So if they want to. You know, if they prefer we do it that way, uh, you know, that puts us at, at a much more significant risk of having to go to appropriations during the year for some unforeseen maintenance, something. Mm -hmm. But wasn't that number already part of the... It's part of this 373, so, so that it would be, it would reduce this. Right, so right. if you reduce that, I would... Is that not part of the adjusted increase? This this is just mm -hmm. your operating budget. I see. Yeah. yeah. You can take it out. That's helpful. I just was curious yeah. if that would, what would be the impact. Okay. Thank you. Is it better to go with that magic number under 6%? Or is it better to... I don't think we can because we, in, in our conversations with, with the town manager, had already removed that. This was part of the capital discussion, mm -hmm. and that's why I think that we should make our point about capital mm -hmm. as, a, as a discussion item that this was work that was done to the tune of 373. Mm -hmm. If we start taking pieces of that discussion, then I think the conversation gets complicated. You know, it gets well, misunderstood. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Let me say this. I yeah. like the idea of having it lower. Right, right. Now, right. If are the two of you going to have the opportunity to talk to the town manager tomorrow before the meeting? We are going to have that opportunity. So if he gives you some response about capital, yes. Yes. you know, I think you, we can't, we're not going to vote on this tonight anyway. I think you should feel free to adjust that yeah. if, if that's, you know, based on that conversation. Yeah. If, you know, if, if we go tomorrow and we see a lower number, I don't think anyone's going to be mad at you. <laughs> Uh, I mean, you know, unless it's like six more teachers, but you know, if it's because of capital or something we've discussed okay. and we have decreased our percentage, yeah. you know, I, I think, and, and you know, and that's that's the recommendation. Then I think you yeah. should feel comfortable making that. Yeah. So you know, Mina, and and the, well, this is not meant just for you, but you brought up the music. Um, I think it's important 
for the school committee to know that you know the all of the people involved in this discussion are aware of it. These are not conversations we would ever have without notifying, for example, the um, subject matter leader, Mr. Hay, um, Teachers Association. Um, this is something that, as we've discussed and, and have been talking over the past many weeks, um, any further reductions made to the school committee's budget is going to affect program. And this is where we see it, um, the, the beginnings of it. Uh, as difficult as that is, and so we can expect to have, you know, people who will be affected by this um, react, which one would expect they to will. have happen. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, and and I think that's something that the school committee, you know, does really, really well is have open discussions about difficult decisions that you're making, um, and and then respond to to the public. So. I just think it's really important for us to say that out loud and to say that these conversations are completely open um, and to demonstrate how difficult all of this is and how difficult any further reductions would be. One other thought that came up, and this isn't really related to the reductions themselves, but that if in the conversation with um, Norman tomorrow there's suddenly more money available from somewhere which, you know, I'm new, but I've heard it has been known to happen on occasion, um, that it be returned to each department in percentages proportional to what they were yeah, that's original, an originally point. reduced. And so I think, should miraculously some money appear, maybe that music could be the first thing that gets nixed from this spreadsheet. Because I agree, I mean, I would, of all the, all the things on there to go are horrible, but that I think just serves such a huge population of students and makes things. I mean, I, I understand completely where you're coming from, I do, um, but, you know, if we can find the magic money that reappears and put it back in there, that would be fantastic. My reaction to you would be that that would be my recommendation. Okay, yeah. great. And I think, you know, what you said earlier is a lot of this is a one-year impact, but a one-year impact of the instrumental music is a ripple effect until right. those kids oh, yeah. graduate from Absolutely. high school. It is. Um, you know, so the f kids the following year won't be impacted, but that that's not a one-year no. impact to those kids, to that grade. Um, but yeah, I think you raise a really good point, and you know, we're still waiting to hear about is there any reduction in what the health care projections are going to be, or do they have an a willingness to take stabilization money out this year. I know, you know, again, I know it's not advisable to put free cash into the operating budget, but we do it every year. We do different things with it every year. It's not unprecedented, and this, again, this is an extraordinary year, and I just feel strongly that before we, you know, we've, we've reduced a lot that's really going to impact the kids next year mm -hmm. and you know maybe it's impertinent and out of our purview but I feel we really have to ask all of those things and make sure that every rock has been looked under and I'm sure the same I certainly don't want you know I don't want the, this to be at the expense of firefighters or police oh. officers or any public no. safety at, at all but we have no window into what where they are with that so and it is in our decision to make in that regard, but it's just really difficult in a vacuum to... Dr. McLeod, you know, again, I, like I mentioned earlier, I do feel strongly about that uh, music program. Is there any other way to get that 72000 from elsewhere without having to cut that program? I know you've looked at a lot of options. I would have a very hard time voting on that. Um, I guess one of the, not to put it back on the school committee, but one of the things when you look at the other things that are being reduced um, would just be by way of demonstrating that I don't know where else to go. Um, and am and, and really open to exploring. I know, Nina, you, you asked about the athletics program. Um, you know, and then we had some di some really good discussion about things that have hap are happening there. Um, 
I, I'm, I have searched and we've had discussions with every administrator to, to see if there are any stones left unturned that we have not considered. Um, one, one example I, I could throw out as, as a comparison would be, well, if we weren't to reduce, for example, instrumental music at the fifth grade, what about if we reduce general music somewhere, um, like, let's say eighth grade? Um, that impacts not only staffing, but it impacts the entire schedule and the ways in which students um, attend their specials and teachers get their, um, their coverage for their prep. Um, so there are areas that we might think about that we simply can't get to because of contractual obligations. Um, what else do we think about? I'm going to roll over in my own grave for saying this, but are there fees that we haven't considered that we should? We did athletic fees. It would have to be after school. Do we talk about I don't bus mean specifically fees? for this, but you know, bus are fees? there other fees, bus fees? We raised it and I think the savings would be Yeah, you know, right. So the within the two mile, if you were to re-implement that, it raises about $19,000. Um, parking fees? Parking fees right now are the equivalent of a bus fee. Of, yeah, so then we would have to also raise you'd have to, to 12. You'd have to do both, um, right? What is, what is going to be the impact and how does it, um, how is it demonstrated here on the changes that you're bringing to the lunch program? So will there be any additional savings that could be realized that we have yet to show? Not from an operational standpoint. The only potential um, is that when equipment breaks down, hopefully as we build that account back up, that account is able to pay for their equipment repair. Um, but by the end of this year, that account could literally be at zero. Yeah. So, so we'll be starting from square yeah. one, trying to build that account to make that truly a self-sustaining program, which right now it is not. Right, so that's a long term. It mm -hmm. will take a while. Yeah. We also looked at things like um, some other support personnel, uh, for example, the reading coach positions. And we've talked about this program, we've been building the program over the past three years, um, and the impacts of that program are, are just now beginning to be realized. Mm -hmm. First of all, developing the relationship with the coaches, then, um, as you said, the professional development piece. So providing those kinds of supports to the classroom teacher. Um, as the opportunities become, to people become more familiar with them, um, so too do we see the impact of the program. And that really felt like, although this program has been in place forever and many, many students benefit from it, um, it's a one-year program reduction, whereas the kids have the benefit of the, the music program for the rest of their time in the district. To reduce our reading support is something that our, our administrative team really felt strongly that is not something that we could do and that the impact that it would have on our students' learning. And that's what we always come back to is those other kinds of support positions um, you know, do, do we want to start talking? And we don't, which is why it's not there, but we haven't talked about foreign language. Um, again, this the conversation happened, I want to say, three years ago, um, where we really wanted to expand foreign language and bring it down to the elementary level. Um, and that was simply something that we couldn't afford to do without it impact, impacting something else. But those kinds of things that we offer to our students that really enrich their academic experience um, that we don't have to offer, you know, that there are certain requirements for foreign language. Do we exceed them? Maybe. Um, but that's another area that, you know, we haven't got here uh, within this discussion tonight. Do you know, just even anecdotally, what our peer districts do? I mean, do they, this is something that we've had for a long time. We, we have a really robust music program. And as I said, taking it away for this grade, even for one year, has a ripple effect. But, you know, as we compare ourselves to other towns, 
Do you know if it, if that if they start that early or they don't start till middle school or? Most towns start that early. They start in fifth grade. Um, but fourth grade. Fourth also grade. many towns do not offer instrumental. I mean, um, general music for as long as we do in this town. Mm -hmm. So it would have okay. to be a study. I would have to no, do. No, I just yeah. But um, it is a typical place for kids to start instrumental music. So as people are saying, you know, looking for a nice to have or whatever, that, that's not what, this, is, this isn't. The only reason it's, it's a nice, nice to have. have, the only reason that it's a nice to have and the reason that it stands out amongst other things is that it does not affect every child. Right. And that it happens within the instructional day. Um, unlike any other program. You know, kids do not get pulled out of one thing in order to go to PE right. or to participate in a sport that happens after school. It's the one area where not all students participate and those that do participate within their instructional day at the cost of something else. And that's why it's, that's why I would argue that it is a nice to have. Again, as much as it pains me, this entire list pains me. These are not things that I'm, as Jean said earlier, this is not my recommended budget. Yeah, I'm just worried that if we take this off, will we be able to bring it back in right. next year? Right. I don't know. I mean, if we keep growing, Mina, so here's another example and another reality. If we keep growing and we keep having additional sections, every time we have an additional section, we have to increase our specialists mm -hmm. to support that section mm -hmm. because our specialists also provide our teachers with their required preparation period. And at the lower elementary level, that does not, in, well, in kindergarten, it does not include art, but it certainly includes three, two PEs and a health, a music, and a library. Um, and so every time we have to increase those things, for, for because of the increased enrollment, so too are we increasing. Um, so I, my guess would be, my crystal ball guess would be that we wouldn't be bringing it back. Because in order to bring it back, we'd have to increase the music program at the fifth grade level for instrumental as well as any additional sections that are being supported by general music. So it's a very, very big decision, I know. But if we can hope that Jen's prediction is true and that there is a percentage of the budget that is returned, um, it's a hope. <laughs> that would be the first place I would go. That would be the first place I would go because that's the one that is the most difficult. Um, given all of the reasons that we've discussed tonight. Right. And, and yes, but I would rather not have it there at all to yeah. begin with if possible. I know. I know you would. I mean, the entire, I mean, again, we all share the entire exercise of predicting that the budget is going to be there. Yeah. 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 So does anybody else have questions or suggestions for... Well, one thing I could say to Mina is that depending on how our discussion goes tomorrow night, if we are able to have the... <laughs> I'm the opposite of you. If we are able to include these other discussion items, capital excise and, op and, um, and adjusted benefits, mm -hmm. um, and we are at, at this number, which is way beyond the 715, then we can go back. As Jean said, we're not about to talk about the details of this tomorrow night. Um, what, we, what we need to talk about is whether that number of 514 is enough. And if we can agree that some of these other um, reductions that we've already made should be counted towards the 715 that we were asked to come up with, 
then we can go ahead and go back to that list and start taking things off again. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, it is my sincere hope that when you have the opportunity to meet with the town manager tomorrow, he will have, you know, been crunching numbers just the way that you have. And if you guys can sit down and figure out where he's comfortable and you okay. have our context for where we would be comfortable, yeah. um, you know, then maybe we'll be pleasantly surprised when we see you tomorrow yeah. night. Mm -hmm. um, but I guess I would say that I consider this the worst case scenario at this point. Yes. And, you know, again, we are not in a position to vote on this because there are still so many open questions that yep. we don't have answers to. I think the only thing that we can do, well, we'll have to see how your meeting okay. goes tomorrow, but I think my expectation for the meeting, the joint meeting tomorrow night, is that we're going to go and be prepared to vote on that highlighted number after we understand where our capital stands, where things like health insurance costs stand, and what the impacts are to the town budget. Yes. But I don't think we can, in, it, in all good conscience, I don't think we can vote until we understand all those yeah. things. Agreed. I would rather understand first, for sure. So, I, you know, hopefully we'll just have a, a difficult discussion, as you like to say, or as you often remark. Um, that will get us to not a good result, but a palatable result for everybody. So. Well, Sue and I will coordinate our calendars before we leave here tonight, and I can reach out to Mr. Camalo um, when we finish here okay. to get the time. All right, well, have we said all that needed to be said? John, do you have anything? I'm good. Okay, thank you. All right, so I just need a motion to adjourn at 8.03. So moved. Um, and a second? Second. Okay, John? Yes. Uh, Jen? Yes. Uh, Mina? Yes. And I'm a yes. So we are adjourned at 8.03. Thank you very much, Steve. Yeah, thank you. Thanks, John. Thanks, everybody. Bye, John. Okay.